Hello again, you're watching News 360 from the News Hub and still on COVID-19, Director of Reconstructive Surgery and Burns Unit at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Opoku Wariampuma says Ghana is very likely to take a big hit of COVID-19 cases in the next few weeks. According to him, Ghana's rate of increase in confirmed cases over the next first 12 days exceeds that of its continental neighbours. Let's speak to him via Skype as he's asking Ghana to enhance its strategy to deal with the pandemic. Thank you for your time, Dr. Mpuma. So first of all, why are you saying that Ghana is likely to take a big hit of COVID-19 cases in the next few weeks? Um, thank you very much. Um, this is based on an analysis of the rate of increase in cases over the first 12 days. If you look at all the other African countries, at the moment, South Africa has got the highest number of cases. But then, if you look at the first 12 days, um, at, the, at the 12 days, South Africa had 62 cases as compared to our 68. Now, if you look at other countries like Kenya, Uganda, Gabon, that uh, had cases, uh, you know, they, 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 noted, they noted their first cases at the same day as we did. You can see that our numbers have outstripped them. And then um, if you also consider the fact that after the session, the president rightly uh, instituted um, and enforce quarantine for uh, all those traveling from outside the country into Ghana. You can see the number of cases that were picked up even when they stopped the flight and when they quarantined everybody for those two days. So if you look at how many, if, if you extrapolate that, you can see that quite a number of people would have slipped into the country in the preceding days that have not been picked up. Thirdly, if you consider the rate at which this infection can be transmitted. If you take the case of Korea, for instance, their first 10, 30 cases, they were able to trace them, well, but there was a 31st case. That single individual accounted for over 5,000 infections. That single individual was able to spread the infection to over 5,000 people. So this is not meant to frighten people, but it is meant for us to have a realistic projection of what could be happening on the ground. And the way South Korea was able to overcome it was to be able to test uh, vigorously and every extensively. They've performed over 300,000 uh, tests. At the moment, our testing capacity is limited and the distribution of our testing uh, and also even the waiting time, etc., cetera, is, is also uh, uh, you know, a challenge. Hmm. So at the moment, basically it's like, it's, you know, it's like we are flying blind. And I prefer that as uh, healthcare managers, of the system, we should rather, I think, assume the worst, not to frighten the public, but we should assume the worst and prepare for it so that in case that happens, we are not caught off guard. All right, Doc, so how do we enhance our strategy? The president has already announced some measures to deal with this pandemic. How do we enhance our strategy, our strategy so that we don't get to the situation where we'll hit countries like Italy, China? Exactly. So this is why it calls for an all-hands-on-deck approach. There, there's not a single... Uh, we need to be able to do all the basic things and do them well to be able to get a good chance of being able to uh, overcome this uh, threat. Now, uh, so that's where individual responsibility is, is very important. So the president has made the right call Earlier on, he, he, you know, he, he, he advised us to uh, he close down schools, advised us to maintain social distancing, etc., etc. But there are a lot of people um, within the country who have still not appreciated the seriousness of the present message. And this is where other uh, uh, society groups, uh, you know, the media is very important here, civil society groups, professional bodies, uh, you know, academia, uh, you know the, the the you know all the grassroots uh, 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 you know uh, uh, organizations should all get on board to make sure that they are educating the individual because the power lies within the hands of the individual. The mm -hmm. president can make all the dietists, but it is up to the individuals to take up the uh, you know the challenge and then make sure that they are. Uh, obeying this rule so that people do not congregate as you've seen today there was a lot of traffic in town people crowded in the market still trying to do last minute buy and, try. and this is a recipe for uh, you know uh, you know a, a dissemination of the of the of the infection and some people are even trying to uh, go to other places so uh, it's very very important that the individuals play their role so those 
if you have to stay at home, stay at home. Don't say that, oh, I'm making one last dash to the barber shop or to, uh, you know, go to a party or to do all sorts of things. It's not important. Anything that is not urgent should be, should be forgotten about. Um. And let's wait out this period. And then it's also important that um, we enhance uh, availability and access to testing. So the labs are very, very important. And I think that by this stage, we should have had collaborations with other labs, apart from the two main labs that are doing the testing. You know, we should have had collaboration with uh, the, the other labs, like MedLab, Lancet, who have got the capacity to be able to have scale up. And then the institutional labs, like teaching hospitals, etc. Because now that we have a uh, community spread, it's very important that even at facility level, we should be able to okay. make some of these determinations because people are still coming for emergency surgeries. People who are pregnant women are still going for delivery cesarean sections, and uh, potentially healthcare workers will be exposed to all these uh, potential, and that will further spread uh, you know, right. the, the, the infection. So it's very important. Thank you very much, Doc, for your time. And I've been speaking to Dr. Opoko Wariampuma. He is Director of Reconstructive Surgery and Ben's Unit at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital.